All right, we got uh, five teapots that I found in my stash. And the plan is to build up two of these as a matched set on a 57 uh, two by four manifold. And uh, where I got the valley pan sitting over there to match it. So starting to disassemble everything. One of these is a 55. Um, the easiest thing with the no automatic choke on the side of the base in 55 they were uh, on the intake manifold the chokes were and of course the secondary tubes also make that weird um, jog down there to the bottom instead of really being more like the 56s which are almost uh, straight up to the plate on top and of course they have the choke mounted on the side of the base where the butterflies are at so this one obviously is stamp rebuilt um, could be interesting to dig into that one and see but it doesn't look as dirty as the others um, all of these the mechanism uh, butterflies everything opens up all that kind of thing so nothing's locked up and then we'll see what they look like on the interior but uh, basically Keeping all the small parts in here. Uh, what I've got in here are the two two small screws that adjust the air bleeds um, for the idle mixture, and then two small screws in there as well that um, help the uh, Fortomatic dash pot bracket uh, to one of those, and then just some the air cleaner studs the fourth one there just had a weird so i just put a regular stud on there and then i've also got a piece of vacuum tubing and vacuum fittings uh stuff such as this to take off this one's kind of interesting Should, could have been for pcv but um well, looks of things i don't know it's not dirty enough to be so but anyway we'll take this apart um i did notice on this one the first one i'm tearing down um I move the choke back and forth is not working so i don't know what's going on with that but we'll dig into it i do have new chokes um got some new parts in here got new of course i got carburetor kits but secondary diaphragms and then uh, i've also got new chokes to mount on there um holly electric choke caps to put on there so then the springs um for the secondaries to lighten up, lighten up a little bit since uh, the vacuum signal will be going to two carburetors instead of one. And that's the idea of making it match. So we'll dig into this. To test this first one, I'm taking apart. Uh, I can't remember the list number on this. Oh, this is 11611. This one I'm taking apart here and just the choke mechanism just to confirm that it does indeed um, move the choke plates back and forth and of course it does so it's just disconnected there and then um of course uh the fast throttle when the choke is engaged this comes down and bumps the butterflies a tick it's a stepped idea but um that's actuating like it's supposed to as well so just to make note of that as we take these things apart and see what's going on in case there's anything that we need to address. All right, the next thing I want to do is take note of the orientation here. I'm going to leave some of these things um, screwed together, like the hold downs for the thermostatic or the, the electric choke itself, reverting to electric anyway. Um, looks like there's three screws in here um, that hold this housing to the base of the carburetor so the idea is to pull this out i just want to double check and see if i got anything that is kind of interesting on um, length of some of the screws and so on and so forth looks like there's a smaller one here that's for um, the top right there you can see that this one's a little longer and then it looks like 
this other one's gonna be the same exact size. I'm gonna pull that out. So, trying to make sure you know what's going on here with um, getting it back together because we're gonna clean all these parts together and then separate them all out. So, anyway, that thing's about to come out of there. There's a, a washer, a lock washer's there. Um, with this small nut to hold down the other, you know, this little arm here that actuates. So we're just gonna pull that out. And then there's also, oh boy, a little bit, a little bit of extra action there too. With this, I don't know how thick that is. I'm gonna make note of that because all this stuff needs to be, and there's another one. Oh no, that's not, that's a part of the arm. Um, just wanna make note of that, we'll pull all this thing apart because we wanna clean everything, lubricate it, put it back together the right way. So if we get, make sure that we're right in the orientation um, of how these things appear, we should be sitting a whole lot better. I just wanna make note of a couple things here. Um, this really needs to be cleaned out well. I did remove the counterweight and this is the way that it slides in. You can see there with that tab, um, slides in the board just like that. And then obviously this small wire is what um, connects there. And then the way that this works, this is the arm. Uh, a little shaft goes through the housing and then this arm right here is what's connected to um, choke right, the, the little stud right there that moves it back and forth, okay? And then um, this shaft goes through and you see how it's kind of keyed so that um, when this fits on there, it'll turn it obviously so this right here this nut and this washer is just a good little keeper so all these parts uh, we're going to go ahead and put into this cylinder uh, to keep them all till we go with the cleaning process and i'll probably disassemble two or three of these to make sure i've got the best parts that i've that i can muster uh, among all of them i assume all the choke houses are going to be the same of course um, these were not built on the principle of electric chokes uh, easy to modify the change, uh, the upgrade, but um, well, thermostatic chokes, this part down here is threaded. Um, I think I removed already. I don't see any of these having any of them on there. The old, like a, well, here's the, here's one of the fittings, but um, there'd be a tube, like a vacuum kind of looking tube, but it's a choke tube that would go down um, to the intake manifold where the crossover's at, and then we'll obviously put in hot air into here and um, with your bimetallic thermostatic spring here, um, it would contract, right? Expand and then uh, move your move your arm. So there's obviously some adjustment to it, but uh, these things, you got any exhaust residue in there, they were, I'm sure they were a mess to fool with. You had to take them out, clean them all off, so. Anyway, it's gonna be an upgrade that we'll do with the electric choke. All right, as we continue this assembly, just wanna note um, how this lever sitting on there, or I don't know what you call it, maybe a cam, but um, it was sitting just like that with the stud out. And of course that's to um, contact that part of the arm off the butterfly shaft. And of course that top piece is up against the choke. Um, lever stud there so boy all kinds of fun moving parts here but uh, basically that's the way it goes on I think yep that little bushing pops out right there um, so anyway we'll make sure we got those oriented correctly and take things apart these gaskets I'm going to go ahead and throw them away and this was the choke plate that covered um, oh boy right inside there on the in the housing just like this. I assume I need to put that back in. I'm gonna to talk to somebody a little bit better than me, but if I'm upgrading to electric chokes, 
I may not need to. We'll figure that out. So anyway. All right, we're going to go ahead. So we've got the choke uh, housing off. We're going to go ahead and start disassembling from the top down. And I um, just want to take these pieces off. Just I'm interested a lot in the chokes and how they're going to be working and functioning if we're changing them over. But we'll go ahead and just start. Um, here I've removed the plate. I don't know why this is here. Maybe it's just a keeper uh, for the secondary tube. These are known to leak if you don't seat the O-rings correctly with the new washers. And then um, start disassembling this. Of course, it's got a small machine screw that has a keeper there. And then um, just a word here about getting some parts um, loose that could be <laughs> tight together just because of age or uh, Fitbit and all of that. Um, boy, that's been uh, rebuilt a few times or someone's tried to stake that one down, haven't they, with the washers? But anyway, um, I, I use a uh, mallet that won't mar any surfaces or really hurt anything, something plastic, preferably. Um, I guess the danger is here in trying to um, work on these suckers that uh, people try to pry things apart. You know, you definitely don't want to do that with this lid. Uh, boy, this cap here, um, very important that it remains as straight uh, surface as possible. And we're going to have to check and, and test on test that for sure. We'll put it back together because uh, you want a good seal up here uh, with what's going on because the secondary speed in here, of course, is your fuel bowl as well. So anyway... Um, it's probably helpful advice there with the rubber mallet. For the secondaries, boy, fun, fun stuff. It's locked in there pretty good, even though I've taken off the two tubes. And then, of course, um, the remaining hold down screw. But um, I'll probably spray that with something just want to crazy. But of course, every kit comes with um, a new diaphragm here to put up for your secondaries. So. One of the things you need to make sure that we do put this back together is to uh, get those O-rings in the right position and, and stake down uh, washers. So these kits come with new O-rings and washers. But anyway, you can see here where this has been staked uh, a number of times. So it makes me wonder how often um, somebody's been into this carburetor here. We'll certainly test that out. But then, of course, um, over here in the base, you can tell where you've got to um, stake those suckers down too with the O-rings there. But um, critical because, uh, boy, uh, these things are known to leak from the secondary tubes. I think that's one of the worst places they can leak from. And uh, start fires. That's what it's called, tearing inferno. Uh, a hollow teapot. So anyway, um, and of course, this right here popped off. It, um, the gasket got a little Bit of oil in it, but man, it's uh, of course, it's dry and brittle. We'll just throw this away. I uh, don't need to save that. 